get a pill. to sleep than in my father's house. Sunday, I would I'd always say last week today, because you know I got two kids a week, so then I would say last week. Well, I mean, how are you today? that picture. Maybe next week I'll wear a robe and have all kind of ways. Remember the commercial for Domino's, the, the race car driver? Hey, whatever his name was, nice PJ. <laughs> yeah, so I'll wear a robe and I'll say these are my PJs. wears the same kind I do. Yeah.
and Savior Jesus Christ. I welcome you all to be here and worship with us as we uh, praise and worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Uh, anything we need to share with one another? It's been that uh, January 24th, 2021. Does any of you think about that as like, you, you know, remember when it, most of us were born and raised, it was 19 whatever, and, and 20 whatever seemed to be a whole nother lifetime away. Well, now we're there and it's 2021 and it's, it, it's a little bit, yeah, just not sure what it is, but it just, I'm, I'm waiting I'm waiting for, you know, now we have electric cars, you know, so the gas engine is going away. And, and I'm, I'm waiting for the hover car to come around, you know, and that, that kind of stuff. So uh, if there's nothing yet, let us sing our opening prayers. We center ourselves in, in worship of Jesus Christ. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Melt me, mold me, fill me, use me. Spirit of the living God, fall on me. Amen. Let's sing number 110, A Mighty Fortress.
Amen. Our call to worship. Zach will put those words up for us. We yearn to be in the presence of the Holy One. To walk beside still streams. To sing as matches our joys. To dwell all our days enfolded in the love of God. Let us pray. Father God, to You we pledge our eternal gratefulness, our love. To You who we owe such a debt of gratitude for Your Son who gave Himself up on that cross. Father, we ask this day that You would accept the words of our mouth, the actions of our hands, and that they would be done in praise and glory of Your precious and holy name. We ask for Your Holy Spirit to be upon us, to guide us, give us strength and comfort. And most of all, Lord, we lift ourselves up to You, asking that You would use us to complete the work that Jesus started on this earth. And we pray and we ask for all of this by the precious blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's in His name we pray. Amen. Amen. The scripture reading today is out of the book of Mark. We'll begin chapter 1, verse 14 through 20. And now, after John was put in prison, Jesus came to Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. And as he walked by the sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, his brother, casting net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Then Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. They immediately left their nets and followed him. And when he had gone a little further from there, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who also were in the boat mending nets. And immediately he called to them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired servants and went after him. It's the word of God given for the people of God. So, so I asked the question, are you going? And, and I thought about that in two different ways. One is I, I read this book some time ago uh, when I was early, still deciding what it was God wanted me. And I read this book, and I believe it was Bruce Wilkerson who wrote it, and it was called The Dream Stealer. And what the book was, it was about a young person who had got a call to ministry, to call to follow Christ. And all along the way, it, it talked about his journey, okay? He talked about his journey that was starting out at his house and, and going to the front door and going to the end of the driveway and going to the edge of town and crossing the bridge and all these milestones that he was to complete along the way. But along the way, everywhere, there was somebody who was trying to stop him, trying to interfere, you know. And I thought, I can't imagine that, you know, especially here we have Zebedee. And, and I think somewhere in Scripture they were called James and John's the son of thunder. So it sounded to me like Zebedee had some real influence on this town. He was somebody that everybody was well known. Because most of the time, it just says, oh, and they left their fathers and their mothers. But they called this person by name. And later on, if you remember in Scripture, it comes a time when, when James and John's mother come to Jesus and they say, hey, when it's your time to, to take the throne, how about my son sitting at your left and your right hand? You know? So these must have been people of influence. It's my opinion. You know? They must have been really people who, who had influence, who, who were powerful, who weren't afraid to speak out. But it says James and John immediately left the boat. So I'm thinking, you know, here, here's Zebedee, here's the dad. He's like saying, hey, are you going? You know, what, what's up with this, you know? He, you know, imagine. Imagine what it was like. 
your, your mom and dad or whatever, you're in the backyard, you know, tending the garden or, or repairing, doing whatever, and all of a sudden, you know, hey, come along, guys, we're going to go play ball or we're going to go check out the, the soda shop or whatever it was, you know. And, and they look up to it. Really? You're going now? I mean, that's, think of it. They're mending nets. This is what they did for a living. But they left. And that's what it really means to be a good disciple. You know, in Scripture, it tells us that we have to die to ourselves to live for Christ. So we talk about dying to ourselves to enter the kingdom. And that means we have to give up some of those things that we find comfortable, some of those things that we find familiar, some of those things that we find the world says is necessary. You know, do you know how many people along the way told me I was insane? Now think about it. I left a good job. I mean, it was my job. I owned a place. You know? And, and, I, and this is what really got me. Even when I was out at, at the seminary taking, taking the schooling, the classes that were necessary, there were other uh, potential pastors, you know, that were in those classes with me asking me if I was insane. Why would you sell your house? Why would you give up your job? Because that's what God called me to do. It's what He asked me to do. And I, I remember the one gentleman, and I think he was from Michigan. It doesn't really matter. But he says, I'm going to do that too after I get my years in and I can get my pension in retirement. So I was like, well, you see, so you're trusting in you and you're trusting in the company and everything else, but where is your faith in God? Good disciples follow Christ. Sometimes it means they have to leave home. There was a story about a nurse, and, and somebody followed her for like 30 years, and they wrote a book. And this, this nurse lived in Texas, and, but she was from the Philippines. And she came over, and, got, and so now, every pay or whatever, she would send money back to her family to take care of their education, to help with their housing and stuff. And, and she, she, did she miss her family? Yes. But sometimes... Being a good disciple means leaving home. Sometimes following God means being uncomfortable. And I, and I was reading some stuff, and it's like, what is it that we do to serve God? And I remember saying, well, I work here, and, and I work there, and I do this. Well, that, those are all the things you do. Those are jobs. That's how you, you, you earn a living. That's how you provide for your family. And all those things are important. And I'm not saying we shouldn't do those. Those are very, very important things. But what is it you do to serve God? That's the important question. What is it that we do to serve God? What is it we do, not because it's something that brings us glory, not because it is, you know, a lot of people will do something just to get a pat on the back. A lot of people do something just to hear the applause of other people. But what is it that we do just because God calls us to do it? You know, we're, we're very, we're very uh, familiar with the saying, you know, God doesn't call people who are qualified. He qualifies the people He calls. So just because He calls you to do something, you, you can't look to God and say, yeah, well, you know what? I'm not really trained in that, you know. You know, I, I, I would like to do that, God, but hey, you know what? Just not in my wheelhouse. I like that term. Just not in my wheelhouse. What does that even mean? You know? So, how do we determine then what our faith is? How do we determine? How, how do we even answer the question that, yes, I have faith in God, as soon as he calls me to do something I know how to do, I'll do it. Kind of, kind of, kind of defeats the purpose, you know. If, if you're, you're, you know, to talking about faith and trust and willingness and sacrifice, all those words that, are, that were so important, all those words that, that Christ used in Scripture. I'm, I'm going to get to that as soon as I 
memorize the third chapter of Philippians or whatever it is, you know. As soon as I get, you know, as soon as I accrue, you know, 200 points and in, in fuel perk points or whatever it is. We always got these, these limitations. We always have these, these little goals that we got to do before we can answer what God wants. But God, God has called us to follow Him. And so, you know what? When you leave the empty fishing, and think about it, since James and John were mending the nets, didn't say they had them finished, you know, because probably, I'm, I'm, I've never went out fishing with a net, so I don't, you know, but I'm just imagining, you know, from seeing television, what, what's that, the deadliest catch, you know, and all those big nets. I'm sure that mending those nets was a, a never-ending job, Pro- a lot like owning a home. Constantly in repair. You know, there's always something it needs fixed, repaired, or taken care of. So James and John are, are right in the middle of mending the nets, you know, I don't some big needle and they're in there sewing them back together or whatever. And they up and leave. I, you know. Or did Zebedee already know that they were to be going somewhere? And were they hesitant? Because he said that they immediately left, so I'm I'm assuming he would be more like questioning. You know, why, why? Why? Why are you taking off now? You know, we 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 still got to fill the hoppers. You know, it, the winter's coming. We got to fill the freezers with fish or whatever. You know. In the book, I've started reading some of the Old Testament again, and I was reading in the book of Hosea. Now, Hosea was one of the prophets that that got an unusual call. Hosea was called to to help the Israelites return from their evil ways. And he says, this is verse chapter 1, we're in the middle of verse 2. It says, And when the Lord began to speak by Hosea, the Lord said to Hosea, Go and take yourself a wife of harlotry and children of harlotry, for the land has committed great harlotry by departing from the Lord. So really what he's saying is go, go take yourself an adulterous wife. He says your children are going to be from an adulterous affair. He says, but, he says, I'm telling you this because the land, the Israelites, have committed great adultery by departing from the Lord. You know, we read the Old Testament, we read through Exodus, and we got the Ten Commandments, and it says, Thou shalt not commit adultery. And we all say, Oh man, I've never cheated on my wife. I'm okay. That's one I haven't... Well, in the Scripture, it's telling us that if we depart from something that we claim to love and follow, that we've committed adultery. We've, we've become harlots. And that's what he's saying here. That the Israelites, by not following God by not following the rules and the laws, not showing their love of Him, they have committed adultery. He said, you know, you can only have one love. You've got to decide what it's going to be, you know. And, and it, it goes on to say that, that most of Hosea is his work to try to reconcile the Israelite people back to God, to turn from their their adulterous ways. In chapter 6, he says it this way. This is verse 6. And it, and it says, it says, I have slain them by the words of my mouth, and your judgments are like that that goes forth. This is verse 6, and it says, For I desire mercy and not sacrifice. And the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. What he's saying is he wants us to have mercy in our hearts. You know, making a sacrifice, again, we're talking Old Testament, so we're talking about them, them slaughtering, you know, whether it be the two turtle doves or a calf, depending on what they're, you know, he says, that's not really what I want. I want your mercy. He wants our hearts to be broken for him. He wants us to turn from our evil way. And that's, that's the gospel that Jesus started. He, you know, when John the Baptist came, he says, come and repent. Turn away from your evil ways. He said, come and follow Christ. 
And that's what Jesus' ministry then was. Time to repent. Time to forgive. And we need to learn to forgive one another. But too often, we want to be disciples. It's a problem I think we have in, in not just in church, but in the whole world today. We lack the accountability to walk the walk that we talk about. The gentleman, I, I, I thought about, I've been pondering this a lot about my, uh, my, my lack of formal education. You know, I'm, I'm not a doctorate. I don't have a master's degree. But what I do have is I, I've learned a lot from people. And, and I, I've learned a lot. And there was this young gentleman, and he owned a business. And it was a uh, sand and gravel, concrete block, you know, building supplies. So, of course, naturally, I was there quite often. And, and I remember going to him. He said he, got, he wanted to hire people. He needed to hire a few more workers. And so his interview process went something like this. They would, you know, he put the ad in the paper. People would call and say, hey, we're interested. He would say, okay, come by for an interview. And he would set them up at a certain day and time. And when they would come, his other employees would, he, oh, he's out in the truck out the side of the building. So that's where his interview process took place, outside in the back of his truck. So if it was the first guy that was interviewed, he would be standing there and he would load cement blocks onto his tailgate. Then he would crawl up into the tailgate and, and put the blocks there. He said, the real guy, the man that I wanted, was the guy that would pick up blocks while we were interviewing and set on the tailgate. He said, the guy that just stood there and watched me, he said, he would talk a good talk, but when it came right down to it, there was no go. It was all for show. He said, and then the next guy would come he would be up in the truck and he would set the blocks on a tailgate and get down. He said, if the guy would help him unload the truck, great. If he said, but people that are going to stand there and watch me work while they're interviewing for a job to do the job I'm doing, he said, what does that say about us? And I, and I, I really took, took that to, to heart because we can talk a lot. And, and that's what I believe we, we hear Paul writing and in James, in the book of James, we hear that writing about what does it mean to be of good works and of good faith. We can all say we have a lot of faith. Oh, I have faith and trust in God. But if we don't step out and show that faith, how does anybody know it's real? How do you know your faith is real if we don't put it into action? A good disciple, a good disciple follows Christ. A good disciple isn't afraid to be uncomfortable. A good disciple isn't afraid to say yes. So, I guess maybe we need to ask ourselves that question. Are you going? I don't know where. I, and I can't, I, that's, see, that's the nice thing. I mean, for, for me, it's the easy part, I guess. All I know is what God calls me to do. And then I get to decide whether I'm going to go or not. You have the same decision to make. Christ calling you, is, is God placing something on your heart? That you're just, ah, I'm going to get around to that. You know? So, soon, as soon as I get a few more bonus points, or as soon as I get what, whatever, I don't know what, what, what's holding us back. But think about, think, about, think about the culture that we live in. I mean, we, we read, it's hard for us sometimes to understand the culture that the Bible was written in. I mean, that was, was before they even invented the computer, you know? To, you know, we didn't have the running water and indoor plumbing, and you know, so a lot of the things they talk about are a little bit strange to us. We don't quite get, grasp it, or we try to marry their culture with ours, and I think it helps us helps us to be confused about what the Bible's saying. But what did the what is one of the things that Jesus did to told his disciples to do? To go out and proclaim the good news of the gospel to go out and share. He sent them out two or three different times in Scripture. We, we read through the Gospel 
where he sent them out two by two. You know, go to the town, proclaim, stay where you're at. If you don't, if they don't receive you, dust the sandals and move on. Notice what he said there. He said, go out into the world and proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. A good disciple goes. Now think about where we're at now in our own in our own culture. I, I'm hearing on more than one occasion by more family members who are unfriending each other because of a political belief. You know, we 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 are gathering ourselves only to be with like-minded persons. Oh, well, I think it's okay to wear blue, so they're all going to be in this group. And I think it's okay to wear plaid, so they're in this group. I mean, that sounds kind of silly, but what makes a difference if we can't talk to one another because one of them's a Republican, one of them's a Democrat, because one of them believes that the only way you can be baptized is full immersion, and the only other would say, oh, it's just a sprinkle will do, you know? And, and we build up these walls and boxes and separate. Well, what it's becoming, we become isolated so much to the point now where we're having families that are tearing themselves apart because they can't, they can't just agree to love one another. Oh, well, you're a Democrat and, and you, don't, you don't agree with what I say, so I don't want to talk to you anymore. I'm not going to be your friend. Where is the love of God in any of that? Where is discipleship? You know, where is Jesus Christ? Are we taking Him with us? I mean, if it's to that point where families are becoming torn apart by, by political difference, what hope do they have of bringing the world to one true God. If we can't agree upon this, what are we ever going to be able to agree on? And if we can't agree, and I'm not even saying to agree, but just to be... To, what does it mean to unfriend somebody? I mean, I, I know that's, that's a, new, a, a new cultural term. But think about it. You know, if, if somebody come to me and say, well, you know what? We're not going to be friends anymore because you're, you're, you, 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 you're on the blue side and I, and I like the red side. So I'm going to unfriend you. How would that make you feel? Where, where is the openness? The open love, the unconditional love that Jesus Christ brought to us. And I know we're not always, always going to agree on everything, or maybe anything, but we should be, hopefully, hopefully, we can agree that this is the living Word of God. Amen? Amen. So, if, if, so we, we got somewhere to start now, right? Amen? You know what's not in this book? There's no denominational separation. There is no separation of man and woman. doesn't say, you know, a woman or a man, either one, is, is, is more, better, or, you know. It's just not here. It doesn't say anywhere. It doesn't say anywhere that we should treat each other differently because of the color of our skin. Doesn't say anything in there about your sexual orientation. Does say a lot in there about sin and what's right and wrong. But to the best of my knowledge, doesn't say anything in there about unfriending people who are different. Doesn't say anything in here about not loving people that are different than you. When I talk about love, I'm not talking about that steam up the windows in the Chevy kind of stuff. I mean, that, that, that's not love. That's lust. 
I'm talking about the love that Christ has for us. The love because when we see one another, we don't see the differences. We see the things that are the same. That we, we look to one another and see them as children of God, created in His image. Can you imagine what the book would be like if it says, okay, my chosen people are going to be created in my image and everybody else you'll know because they have a third eyeball. It's not there. It's not there. It says all people. We were all. All was an inclusive term. There's no exclusions here. Good disciples go where they're called. Good disciples love God's children. And good disciples. You know, good disciples make mistakes. But good disciples are forgiving. So, are you going? Simple question. Are you going? Where are you going? To proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ to the world. It's what we need to do. Doesn't matter if they're Baptist or Pentecostal, if they're Presbyterian or Lutheran or whatever, I don't Catholic, it doesn't matter. What matters is they're God's children. And 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 that's the other thing. We gotta be careful that we don't hold ourselves up and say, Oh, well I'm only gonna hang out with them because they're Christians. Well nobody goes to the lost, nobody goes proclaims the gospel. To those who think about this, don't worry about whether they're what, what their denomination is. The people we need to be talking to are the people who don't have a denomination, who don't belong to a church, who don't know who grace is. Those are the people we need to be seeking out. Those are the people who need to hear the good news of Jesus Christ. Those along the way that have proclaimed to be one denomination or another, maybe they just need a Maybe they just need to toss a little fire. They need to just be heated up a little bit. I plan on going. I hope you all go with me. To proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ to the world. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Father God, Lord, we hear you calling. And we want to go. Lord, we have to admit we're scared. We don't know what's out there. We're afraid of the unknown. But Lord, You've told us in Your Scripture that there is nothing new under the sun. You've told us in Your Scripture that You will walk with us. You would never leave us nor forsake us. You've told us in Scripture that You go and make the way straight. But yet we still fear. We're still hesitant. We're still unsure. Lord, we pray. We pray that You would open our hearts and fill us with Your courage. Fill us with Your strength. Lord, You have promised us the power. And Lord, we ask for that power to go out into this world and proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. To bring hope to the hopeless. To bring healing to the sick. To share Your love, Your salvation with the downhearted and the broken. Lord, we pray. We pray that You would guide our steps and that all that we say and all that we do would bring glory and honor to Your precious and holy name. It's in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen? Amen. Number 361, Rock of Ages. Just rock of power.
time in our service we share our joys and our concerns. Do you have anything we... Yes, Pauline. Oh. Praise the Lord. And and Jane. And Jane, everything's okay. No, no wonderful, wonderful news. Yes, Shirley. Wonderful. Mm-hmm. They're they're also showing oh wonderful. Amen. Amen. So your sister Bobby is doing well, showing improvements. We just pray and pray that would continue. And Kim and Newt are also showing signs of improvement. Wonderful, wonderful good news. Praise the Lord. Any others? Yes, Judy. Thanks to Pauline for that beautiful. Ah. Amen. Heart day is almost upon us, huh? Uh, looking online, Edwin is asking prayers for health and everyone else. Donna is asking prayers for Derek. He got hurt at work. That's not a... When you're a police officer getting hurt at work, like, uh, hope there was no shooting involved. and Just, just prayer, prayer for Derek and his healing. Um, Karen is in Virginia, so prayers for uh, safe traveling mercy for her as she returns home. Uh, Jenny's mom, Bobby, had surgery. She's have, she had a knee replacement and should be coming home from the hospital today. Everything went well, so prayers for continued healing and uh, all goes well. Anne is asking prayers for the Wade family who lost a son and a brother this week. So prayers for the Wade family. They would find peace as they, uh, they mourn the loss. And prayers for Denny Mead, Cliff's uncle, who is recovering from cancer surgery. The prayers for healing for, for Denny Mead. Irene is asking prayers for herself as she is not having a good morning. So we pray for, pray for God's touch to be upon her, that he would be uh, strengthened by his love and mercy. Regina is asking prayers for Patty, her mother-in-law, who is having health complications. And the doctors are still trying to, to determine the best way to help her. So if we pray for Patty and ask for her healing and uh, for strength. We also pray for those doctors and nurses that they would have the, uh, the wisdom and the knowledge to assist God in healing physical bodies. Uh, Regina is asking prayers for herself and prayer for her co-workers as they have, uh, they have, they have fallen victim to COVID-19. So I'm... I'm Guessing maybe Regina has COVID, and and okay. So prayers for Regina and her uh, co-workers as uh, the COVID has hit their their place of business. Uh, prayers that they can figure out what's wrong with her furnace. It quit the other day, but she's thankful for a friend and a family who are trying to help fix fix it and provide space heaters to keep the girls warm until it's fixed. So we uh, we just pray for that man with their woman with the right furnace knowledge to show up and, and give them the uh, assistance they need. Uh, Lois is asking prayers for all of those who are touched by COVID and other illnesses. Marilyn is asking prayers for safe travels for Andrea and Allison as Jack as they're leaving Florida this week to come back to PA. So safe traveling mercies for them. Samantha is asking prayers for her grandmother Mary Jane and the whole family and prayers for well, her, her mom, Cookie, who got her first shot of vaccine today. And uh, Karen is asking prayers for Nancy and Matt Hinkle. And Zach would like to praise God for the fact that his back is finally feeling better. Amen. And we praise God for that also. Um, praise God for all the ways that he uh, reaches out with his loving arms to touch us, to heal us, to give us strength. Sometimes, sometimes I know people are like, well, why does God let this happen? Well, I, I don't look at it that way. I just look at it and say, praise God that he's opened up the windows of heaven and poured out his blessings upon us. Amen? Amen. Imagine 
And don't, don't spend too much time, but just imagine what it would be like if God was a vengeful God and not a loving God, that He didn't bestow His blessings upon us, that He didn't give us the healings and the things even sometimes before we ask for them. It would be a dark and dismal world. Let us pray together as we lift up Bill and Karen. Pray for Bill for strength and for healing. And praise God for Brian and all is well with his family. For Bobby, continued prayers for her as she she is uh, showing re- improvements. Lord, we just pray that you would continue to bless her life. And for Kim and Newt. And Lord, we, we, as we gather here, we thank you that you hear our prayers and for these this wonderful good news of healings and those who are, are, are coming around and feeling better. And Lord, we just we ask for your continued blessings in their lives. And Lord, for those who are who are still being diagnosed and battling with this COVID, Lord, we, we pray that you would uh, show them healing and strength. And for those who are, are are just battling with cancer, Lord, Lord we, we just pray for healing. Lord, for those who are struggling with all kinds of afflictions, whatever it may be, Lord, we we lift them to you this day, knowing that you are the great physician, the great healer. And for, Lord, for those things that are, we hold so tightly into our hearts, Lord, that we're not sure how to share out loud, but those things who weigh on our minds and our hearts, that brings us stress. Lord, we thank You. We thank You that You hear our prayers. Lord, that You know our hearts. We thank You for those unanswered, un, 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 unspoken prayers. Lord, they're all answered and we thank You for those prayers for our grandchildren, for our children, for our spouses, for those economic difficulties. And we thank You for those those economic pleasures and those those blessings that you've given to us. Lord, we we lift all of these things up to you. We pray now the way that we were taught to pray in Scripture. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. After all these months, I still want to say if our ushers would come forward. (laughs) Amen. We just, I just want to offer a word of prayer to thank God for, for His blessings. But I want you to pray with me. Pray with me that this week, this week more than any other, that you would find that unexpected blessing. I wanted to pray that that unexpected blessing would be upon you this week. Now, I don't know what that's going to look like. It may come as something that looks difficult or looks like a burden. It may look like something you want to shy away from. But I pray that you would embrace whatever it is that comes your way. I pray that it would become a great joy and a blessing to your spirit. A great joy and blessing in your life. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for all the many wonderful gifts that you have opened up the windows and poured out upon us. Lord, we thank you for the for the financial stability that the church is having right now. Lord, we pray for your continued blessing. Lord, we pray that you would continuously use us 
that we would become your hands and your feet. That we would become your messengers here on earth. That we would continue to proclaim the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That we would be able to continue to shine forth your light in a, in a dark world. Would we just pray for your continued blessings. It's in Jesus' precious and holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Shall we sing our doxology? something that we all need to remember, something we all need to to uh, tuck in that little that little pouch in our heart, something that we need to uh, carry with us, something we all need to remember that it's not about us, it's not about me. And so we need to be able to remember to share. I want you all to remember that Jesus loves you. Let me sing number 191. Sunday is the fifth Sunday of the month. Oh, goody. Yeah. Uh, we've done a lot of different things in the past to, to celebrate a fifth Sunday. Um, one of the suggestions that, uh, because I, I make comment of people wearing pajamas at home, that we should have a, a pajama Sunday. Uh, You all, you all are more than welcome to come however you wish to come. I have no judgment whatsoever. I would just say this. If you decide you're going to wear your pajamas, let's make it decent. <laughs> too, many, too many of us, especially maybe on the masculine side of the fence, tend to wear things that wouldn't be appropriate in public for... <laughs> Ah, pajamas. So, ah, other than that, I'm okay. 
I am okay. I, I, I want you to know, without a, without a doubt, I'm, I'm probably like the, 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 the horse with blinders, the oblivion. When you leave today and somebody says, oh, with so-and-so in church, yeah, well, what were they wearing? I would have no clue. So you came to church in your pajamas, I would say, oh, nice. The Domino's commercial where the race car driver, you know, hey, nice PJs, you know. And then somebody would say, well, what were they wearing? I'd say, I don't know. Because I just wouldn't remember. <laughs> Amen? Amen. Because I, I, try, I try with all my heart, and that's, what I, that's the whole message today. I try with all my heart to just see people. To see children of God. You know, I'm, I'm the one that you can wear polka dots and plaids. You can wear orange and purple. I don't care. It all looks good to me. Amen? Amen. Father God, we ask now that as we depart company with one another, whether we be connected over the Internet or whether we be face-to-face, Lord, we pray now for Your, your peace, for Your love, and for Your mercies to be upon each and every one. As we go forth now, let us take the love and mercies that God has given us and share the with peacefully with all those that we would meet. And until we meet again in His precious and holy name, know that you are loved. Amen? Amen.